Okay, so today is probably going to be a long one because we have a good chunk of information to go over and I'm going to do it slowly uh, to make sure that we digest and understand all the information, you know? Doesn't, doesn't make sense if we have a ton of information to just rush through it, then we're going to remember none of it. Anyway, quantifiers, that's what we're dealing with. We have universal and existential quantifiers. If you have a mathematical background, you know where I'm headed already. If you don't, get ready for this because it's pretty cool. So there are two quantifiers, universal and existential. And first, we're going to talk about universal. So universal statements are of this form. If I said all S R P, and then another way you could have a universal statement is to say no S R P. And these are basically saying here, let's, this is basically saying the first sentence, if something here, or if anything, if anything is an S, then it is a P. And the second statement, no SRP, is saying if anything is an S, then it is not a P. So uh, how, how can we make some sense of this, right? Let's say I said, all humans are selfish. So we have that form, all SRP. All humans are selfish. What I'm claiming is that if something is a human, then it is selfish, right? So you could have a group of things, right? You could, let, let's say I'm in this group. You could point to me and say, okay, Johnny's a human. That means he's selfish. You could point to a snake and be like, okay, well, that's not a human, so we can't say anything about that yet. But if something is a human, then we know it's selfish. Now, I might say the opposite. Maybe I'll say no humans are selfish. Now we have the form no SRP. And so by saying that no humans are selfish, then what I'm claiming is that if something is a human, then it's definitely not selfish. If something is a human, then it is not selfish. Now, I have a lot of words written out here, not a lot of symbols. How can we make this symbols? Well, what we need is the universal quantifier. Now, the universal quantifier is just this symbol right here. Oh, sorry, all those colors got in the way. It's just this. It's just an X within parentheses, a lowercase x. And we reserve the last three letters of the alphabet, so X, Y, Z, for our quantifiers, um, for our variables. Um, you really at least in class, you're not going to be going beyond three variables. Um, so just using X, Y, Z is fine. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do is we're going to have one of X, Y, and Z um, wrapped in parentheses, right? And so now, so if I wanted to translate this sentence, all S, oh, that should be capitalized, all S, R, P, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this out here. I'm going to write it out and then read it to you how you would read it out loud. So we have, we have it written like this. All SRP. Now how I would read the symbolic representation is for all X, if X is an S, then X is a P. And notice, right? I wrapped um, S, if SX, then PX, within parentheses. Now, why did I do that? I did that because our universal quantifier here governs all of that. And so I wanted to wrap those in parentheses. If I didn't include the parentheses, then my universal quantifier is only going to govern what it is immediately next to. So that right there, SX. And then our PX would just be like some free variable. We don't want that. We want, in this example, to govern the entire statement. And now, likewise, if I have no SRP, no SRP, how will I write this? I'll say for all X, if X is an S, then X is not a P. That's how you would, that's how you would say it. And so, Let's do this in English, right? Let's let's make some sense of this. What if I want to say, um, let's say my claim is all pools are fun, right? Let's just imagine for a second that all pools are fun. How am I going to symbolically represent this? What I'll say is for all X, if 
x is a pool, then x is fun. That makes sense? Really hope it did. We're going to do another example. What if I wanted to say that, oh, this is, I think this is something we can all agree with. What if I wanted to say that no wasps, no wasps are nice. If we have any wasp apologists, I'm not sorry, wasps are not nice. Um, so no wasps are nice. Then what my claim is, for all x, if x is a wasp, then x is not nice. Oh my gosh, yeah, 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 yeah. there you go. Then all wasps are not nice. No wasps are nice. There you go. That's how you would say it. So that's everything to cover that we need to cover, I think, for the universal quantifier. Now what we're going to do is move towards the existential quantifier, some existential statements. Now, what is an existential statement? That would look like the form some s, some s rp. And then we might say some s, some s are not p. Now, with our universal statements, those were conditionals, right? We had a, um, if something is a p, then it's an s. Our existential statements will be conjunctions because some s are p can be translated to, uh, we could say, at least one thing is an S and it is a P also. So by saying some S are P, I'm saying that there's at least one thing that is an S and it is a P as well. And then when I'm saying, so there's your conjunction. And then when I'm saying some S are not P, what I'm saying is at least, at least one thing, at least one thing is an S, is an S, and is not, is not a P also. So some S are not P means that at least one thing is an S, but it's also not a P, not a P. And again, we have a conjunction going on. So like before, we've got a lot of words and we like symbols. Well, to have our symbols, we need an existential quantifier symbol. And our existential quantifier is going to look like this. So it's open parentheses, a backwards capital E, X, and then close parentheses. So that means that is our existential quantifier. It essentially means that there exists an X. That's how you would read it. There exists an X. And again, like before, if we need multiple, we could use Y, we could use Z. More, most commonly, you're going to use X, especially if there's only one variable. So that reads, there exists an X. So now let's go back to our translation, right? So I have some S R P. Some S R P. What I'm saying with this sentence is, there exists an X such that X is an S and X is a P. When I'm saying that some S are not P, if I'm saying that some S are not P, basically what I'm saying is that there exists an X such that X is an S, but X is not P. And now let's go to English. Let's see some real examples of this. Um, color did we use before? I think we used yellow. Let's use yellow again. Um, so let's say some rectangles are squares, right? That's true. Some rectangles are squares. What I'm saying is that there exists something, there exists something, right? Where uh, that thing is a rectangle and it's also a square. So something out there exists that is both a rectangle and a square. Now what I might say, what's another example? Uh, some, uh, let's say some people, some people, that is not how you spell people. Where did the R come from? Some people are not kind. And that's a sad reality, isn't it? And so basically what I'm saying is that there, there exists something, there exists something out there in the world, right? Where that something, call it X, is a person, um, and it is 
not kind. So that's a person and it is not kind. So there's some quick examples. Now, I don't think that was difficult, but now we could start getting into some complicated sentence translations. Um, we're going to see how, how really cool this is, how powerful we've become with these tools in our toolkit. Let's go green. Let's go green for this, right? We're going to do two examples. What if I wanted to say that? Water and soda. Water and soda are drinks. Now, basically, what I could say is for all x, I can use my quantifiers, right? Before, what I might say is I, I might do like, um, I might do something like this. Um, maybe I'll do, uh, that's not how you do it. Maybe I'll do that and uh, that, right? Subject and a predicate, we're saying water is a drink and soda is a drink. But now with my universal quantifier, what I want to say is for all, for all things in the world, right? For all x, and x is just a variable that could be anything. For all x, right? For all x, if, and let's, we're going to have to use double parentheses for this. If x is water or x is soda, then we can conclude that x is a drink. That's basically what we're saying. So notice how different the actual sentence is from the symbolic representation, right? Our sentence, water and soda are drinks, that, that's a conjunction. And then in our translation, we have not only a disjunction, but also a conditional. And that's something you're just going to have to drill and practice and exercise on your own, be able to acquire these skills where you could see water and soda are drinks. What am I claiming? Okay. What I'm claiming is that if something is water or soda, then I can logically conclude that it is a drink. And so in symbols, I'll put WX or SX. If that's the case, then DX, then it's a drink. So it, it can get a little complicated, but don't worry, I got faith in you. Practice, practice, practice. Another example, and this one's going to be more complicated. That's why we saved it for the end. We're going to say, let's say, oh, I don't know. Um, I want a conditional. So let's say, um, if Johnny is a teacher. So we're going to combine what we did in the last video with this video. So if Johnny is a teacher, then some men are teachers. Now, this is a this is a true statement if you, if Johnny is a man in this example. And since we're talking about myself, I am. If Johnny is a teacher, then some men are teachers. That's we can conclude that. But how can we represent that? Well, let's just look at if Johnny is a teacher. We're specific, right? We're not talking about something in general, universally or existentially. We're specifically talking about myself, talking about Johnny. So we're going to use what we learned last time with our subjects and predicate. So if Johnny is a teacher, that's going to be capital T, lowercase j. And then this is the conditional. So if Johnny is a teacher, then some men are teachers. Okay. This is looking like our existential case, right? So what I'm going to do right now, we have to have our ex we have to have our existential variable. There exists an X such that uh such that if x is a man um it's also going to be a teacher so there exists an x where x is a man and x is a teacher and that is our whole statement so let's just look at that real quick right over here let's uh let's use white just to be different if johnny is a teacher then there exists something out there where that something is a man and that something is a teacher. And in this case, we could say that that something is me. That, or that's, sorry, let's be grammatically correct. That something is I. Um, that X in that case would be lowercase j for Johnny. But we'll talk about, we'll talk about substituting uh, for variables in a future video. Um, that is going to conclude us for today. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I really hope you understand. And I hope you learned something.